I wanted to begin this morning by taking a picture of all you. Okay? Let me take a picture. Everybody smile. No, 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 no. That's not very good. Uh, Sue, would you move right over here? Here, move this. Just move this stuff. That's okay. Sit right here. I can't really get you in the picture. That's very good. That's pretty good. Uh, could you guys move over just a little bit? Bobby, I know you don't want me to touch you, but, but come on over. You're a little too far over there. Uh, a little more to the center. Sir, you're, you're kind of blocking the person behind you. Could you move a little? Let me see here. Um, you, you. Oh, beautiful. Stand up. I love the coat. Stand up. You got you to gotta stand up. Excellent. Right there. Very good. I think we got it. Uh, sweater. Yeah, okay. I, okay, you can sit down. Now, I think we're good. I think we're okay. Let me see. Um, sir, could you smile a little more? Please. <laughs> Way in the back, Bruce, lean, lean just a little bit there. Okay, I think we're good. I think we're good. Everybody kind of lean to the center. Oh, choir, can't forget you. Pull the collars up, please. Bugs me to death. <laughs> Pull them up. Okay, we're all good. We're all good. Lean to the center. Lean to the center. Lean to the center. Okay, we're going to take a picture. Okay. One more, please. There we go. One more. Take another one. Sir, could you smile? We're all waiting for you. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Don't you just love digital photography? <laughs> right? Because with digital photography, you don't have to wait for the development. And the irritating thing about it is there's always time for... I didn't hear you. Oh, it drives me crazy. One more. Because we're all seeking to have what? The perfect picture. And so we manipulate, and we move people, and, and we try to get them in the right height, and, and you know, uh, the perfect picture. And yet I wonder sometimes if the perfect picture, think about it, isn't really the imperfect one. I mean, how many times have you gone to a wedding? And the photographer takes all these fancy photos, you pay a whole bunch of money for them, and the best shots are whose? The candid photos that other people take. Why is that? Because they're not contrived. They're not manipulated. They're not played with. They are who people are. And we enter into that experience, and we celebrate, and we rejoice. The imperfect may actually be the perfect. But that's not the way we live. That's not what we try to do. I mean, at one level we understand that, but at another level we are always fighting against it. Trying to create a society, a business, an institution, a church, a family that meets what we think it should be. What our, my, somebody else's, we don't even know what their definition of perfect is. That's a tough way to live, friends. Trying to live up to those expectations of someone else. Trying to be the person someone else says you should be. You know, it's been a long time. Well, it hasn't been all that long ago, but anyway, it's been a few years since I stood in the sidelines and I watched my children participate in sports and other activities and listened to the dumb things parents yell. Well, I'm going to write a children's book someday for parents, and it's going to be the dumb things parents, maybe grandparents, yell at sporting events. Like, run faster. The kid's running as fast as he can. Can you not see that? Try harder. He's trying. She's trying. Be smarter. You do it. <laughs> but do you see what that does to a child? immediately says, you're not good enough, you're not trying hard enough, you, you could do better. Well, you know what, maybe that's as good as they're going to get. Or how about the pressure? 
You know, this is an easy one. How about all the pressure that's placed on, on women, young women, older women, to look a certain way, to, to meet a set standard that's done by someone who wants to market something? And then we wonder why uh, they deal with self-esteem issues and personal issues and eating disorders, not just women, but boys and men too. Never good enough. Too many young people grow up feeling ostracized, ugly, dumb failures because they don't meet a criteria established by someone else. And then we wonder why we have all this misdirected anger. When you don't fit in, when somebody always tells you that you're a failure, when you are always looked at as an outsider, bam! It blows up. Shifting gears a little bit here, if I could personalize this. You know, I believe, I believe that preaching is not just a skill but an art. It's an art or a skill which seminaries work very hard to teach. I've participated in that process. And there are some people who are very, very good at it, excellent at it. There are other people that are good and, and others that just may be average. But nonetheless, it is an art or a skill. But what I've learned early on is that in preaching, just like in almost anything else any of us do, you can't imitate somebody else. Yeah, I've known preachers over the years who were actually in trouble with their congregations. Pro who knows why, but the focus became their preaching. They didn't, they didn't say what the congregation thought they should say. And so they talk to the congregation and say, well, what do you want to hear? And they say that. And they've literally gone and gotten a Billy Graham sermon and preached it, and it still wasn't good enough. The congregation didn't know it was a Billy Graham sermon, you say. But my, here's my point. My point is whether it's preaching or it's doctoring or whatever it is, it, it has to be you. There is no set or perfect standard, even though we, we want to judge others or, or say that about others. There is no perfect standard. It has to be the best you are. And, and when, we, when we criticize and when we, we try to constrain, we actually damage and hurt that development process. You know, how many kids grow up doing jobs they never wanted to do because mom or dad said, you have to go to a good college so you get a good job so you can have a good living. Okay, what is that? Don't you just want them to be happy? But you see, we don't do that. We want to take the perfect picture. Really? That's what comes to my mind when, or came to my mind when I read Jesus' encounter with this fig tree, the parable in the Gospel of Luke. You know, oftentimes what we focus on there is, is and sermons and commentaries all talk about, oh, you, you repent and God's going to give you another year. Okay, I get that. Heard it. But what I read about this, what I saw in this, is not that God gives us another year, it's that that, that Jesus says, give them the space. Give the tree the space to grow and to develop. It's not about the year. It's about the, about the freedom and the opportunity that time presents. You know, we don't know the history of this tree. You know, maybe it was a drought that year. Maybe it was a dry year. Maybe it was an infestation of bugs. Maybe this tree had a very poor caretaker. We don't know any of that. None of that matters. What Jesus says is, back off. Give it space. Give you and me space. And therein, friends, that space to be free, to do, to become, therein is the real hope. Do you follow me? The perfect in the imperfect. You know, I asked my son one time, why in the world would you want to be a police officer? No guns in our house. None. Yeah, I mean, that's just it. And he looked at me out of the clear blue and he says, it's a noble profession. Well, are you going to stay in the way of that? You know what I mean? 
the space to be who you're called to be. There's a, sailor, uh, a saying among sailing people, I'm told, that a pessimistic sailor complains about the wind. The optimistic sailor expects the wind to change. But the good sailor adjusts the sails. I think that's what Jesus does here. He's going to shift the paradigm. He's going to change how people think. Don't cut it down. Don't cut it down. Don't destroy it. It's not even about giving it a, 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 a second chance. It's about giving it the space to be. Give it a fair chance. And a fair chance and the freedom to become is all any of us could ask for. It is a fact in the United States that most ministers stay at their congregations an average of only three years before they move on. Sometimes because they become so discouraged, but oftentimes because their churches discourage them, expecting more than they can produce, especially in a short period of time. And I found this uh, want ad for a minister of a Presbyterian church in South Carolina. I'm going to just read it to you. You tell me what you think. Such and such a church is again seeking a senior pastor. We are a congregation of about 100 active ministers. I'm not sure how you're a senior minister in a 100 active member church. But anyway, established in 1875. Duties include all preaching and teaching responsibilities for Sunday mornings, Sunday nights, with sermons expected to be an average length of 45 minutes. <laughs> Pastor will also be responsible for all teachings on Wednesday night and the adult Sunday school class. In addition, we are currently without a youth pastor, so the pastor will be responsible for all youth activities. Pastor is also responsible for all hospital shut-ins, sick visitation members, former members, friends of members, and former members, and community people. Pastor will be expected to plan and lead an annual mission trip and coordinate all related funding activities. Pastor should be available to talk to any member of the congregation at any time for the spiritual well-being of every member of the church. We also believe it is important for the pastor to make himself or herself known throughout the community. That means the pastor will attend all special sporting events of the youth and the church including homecoming events, prom nights, playoffs, cheerleading competitions, and or associated functions. In addition, the pastor will lead all board and committee meetings and be available for all funerals and weddings of members in the community. Duties are expected to take approximately 40 hours a week. <laughs> Two weeks of vacation will be given a year. A parsonage is provided, but it needs some work. <laughs> so you might want to investigate purchasing your own home. <laughs> Salary will be $35,000 if you agree to pay your own health insurance. Uh, you must also have a cell phone and a reliable vehicle. Inquiries may be made to the ruling elder, Dave Wellington, Sr. Boy, I'm jumping at this one. <laughs> they forgot the part about cleaning the bathrooms, so I mean, I'm really surprised about that one. We laugh or we gasp. But there is so much to think about in this job offering, not as it applies to ministers, but as it applies to all of us. Do you get it? As it applies to all of us. It's not about the time, friends. It's about having the space. The space and the freedom to really be and to create without all these predetermined points at which we're going to fail. You know, one of the things we try to do, uh, we are control freaks, I think, in our own way. 
And one of the things we try to do is control our environment, trying to limit anything we, you, me, individually determine is chaotic. You know, chaos. Get it out of here. And yet, if you read the book of Genesis, I know that in English it has been mistranslated, that God created out of the Latin, ex nihilo, which means out of nothing. But in Hebrew it really says God took chaos and made the earth. God uses chaos, which is that space and that freedom to be. The story is told of Henry Ford leading someone through his offices and showing them the plant. And as they walked by one particular uh, office, there was a man in his chair leaning back, feet on the desk, doing nothing. And they got a few steps beyond, and the visitor grabs Henry Ford and says, you know, what about that? What about that man? He's just sitting there, wasting your money, doing nothing. And Henry Ford says, no, he's not doing nothing. He's doing exactly what I pay him to do. Dream. Create. B. Can we offer any better gift to one another and to the world? Can we receive any better gift from our family, from our friends, from our spouses, from our children, ourselves? Jesus says to that tree, Jesus says to the person who cares for it, Jesus says to us, here it is, here's the freedom, here's the space. Use it. Take it one more time. You may be imperfect, but in God's eyes, it's going to be great. Amen.